you'll never guess what we're gonna work on today. Deck down, everybody. Yeah, this is a new little side project I've been dabbling with in my, you know, spare time in between all the other... <clears throat> I often wonder, like, if there's anyone that just happens to be popping over to my channel and is like, Oh, I guess we'll check out this Tango Tech guy, see what he's up to. It's gotta be like, just nope, I'm out. You have no idea what's even happening down here, and I can't even begin to explain it anymore. It's pretty ridiculous. Ow. No, not you. Pipe down. Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> He's right above me. He's in there, snorting away. So today is one of those things I have been waiting for to just work on forever, and I'm super excited. And there's a Ravager right around the corner who's gonna probably eat my face here. Hello? I heard you. Where are you? Some Somewhere? No? We're cool? Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna go looking for him. Today we're gonna work on everything that is after the player leaves the game. We're gonna talk about how you hand in an artifact, we're gonna talk about the scoring system, we're gonna talk about a lot of things. And now, previously, I had it- oh, that's right, you can't open that door again, I forgot. Previously, it was made so that like, okay, you got your artifact, you come out of the game, and we were gonna do all of the post-game extravaganza, happy fun time activities, right around here- what is- why is that there? Hello? Why is there a random furnace floating in the sky? I did not put that there. Anyway, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by Furnace Face over there, uh, we were gonna do the shop and everything here. We got some things to discuss though. One, and the main issue here we're dealing with is, okay, is right outside there, there's lots of evokers and they bring the Vex. And what I want, I didn't want the player to come in here with their artifact and be like, yes, we got it, excellent. And then a Vex flies through the wall and is like, boop, you're dead. So that's why instead we're going to drop them. They just drop down this giant hole right here and fall into this area far enough away where the Vexes will not change them. Change? Chase. Chase is a word. That's a word I should use with my face. So I've been busy digging out a hole here through Deep Slate, which is just the greatest experience ever. We all love manually digging out Deep Slate, but this is gonna be the whole post-game experience. We're gonna have an anteroom here where you hand in your artifact, if you have an artifact, and you will then proceed through a magic three by three portal of happiness, open up into the shop that will have all the cards for sale and some of the victory tomes as well. We'll talk about those later and a little foreshadowing as to what's to come in the back there. So there's a lot I want to go over today. The whole post game experience, handing in your artifact, how you get out of here when you're done, the card buying process, how I'm going to select which cards are available, how that's going to be randomized, uh, victory tomes, the scoring system, weekly phases, a lot of things we're going to go over today and really lock down. Uh, and I'm excited about it. And I think we're going to do this in two phases. I think the first phase is I'm going to build the room here. Uh, and the second phase is going to be all the redstone. There's going to be a lot. And I mean a lot of redstone down in this hole here. Okay, and a few hours later, the building is done. This is the first room, very simple room here, very little simple square room with one major purpose. And you are immediately greeted with a sign that says, relinquish your artifact. And it should be obvious based on the design of the room that you are to, put, you are to throw your artifact down there. And it lands on the powdered snow and will go into the system that will process it and see if it is in fact an artifact and if so, it will return you frost embers based on the value of that artifact. Different different artifacts have different values, anywhere from like seven all the way up to like 60. And they will pop up here. So shortly after you drop the artifact in, it will evaluate it through a whole bunch of sorters and all that stuff. And then you'll get like a, this'll, this'll click down automatically. And this is a bubble vader here. Your frost embers, your stack of frost embers will just shoot right up here. And then this will immediately close. I'm hoping I can get all that timing just right. And then your pile of frost embers will land right there. Now, if for some reason you fled the dungeon without an artifact, you get to take the path of the coward, which uh, will lead to the exit. We'll get into it in a, in a little bit, but it, it's not gonna be glorious. But for those triumphant heroes that did return an artifact, the, it's the timing is drop the artifact, embers pop up, and then uh, this, this won't be here now. This is all gonna be automated and in sequence, but you get a nice little opening door here. This design was done by some uh, it's like up and coming YouTuber, Mambi, 
Jamber, Matt Ma Jam, Jam, I'm not sure, something like that. But anyways, he's he's a new guy. Uh, we'll, yeah, try and we'll send. I'll, I'll put a link in the video. You send him some love. Maybe he'll get his channel kickstarted or something like that. But I think the flow is gonna be great here. I think I'm gonna get some sound effects hooked up too, so that this all happens and you are granted access into the final room. Hi, Matt. Hi for being here. You're baddie. Thank you. You are granted access to the dark and mysterious Frost Ember Shop. Now the first thing that should pop out to you is that this room is dark it doesn't even look spawn proof but it is it barely is and this was this is intentional i wanted this room to be very very dark we have a little bit of light pouring down just enough for the from the crying obsidian down here to give some fours right here you can see it, it tails off to ones and right as it's about to become a zero we have some light down below that's just seeping through these shulker boxes here to meet it in the middle. So this room is about as dark as it possibly could be. And there's a reason I want it to be this dark because it's gonna draw attention to the cards that are for sale. So the way this is gonna work, uh, and I gotta I gotta colorize these and make them brighter here, but we, we have it segmented off into four sections here that you can see, okay? This right here, there these are your common cards. There are five common cards in the game. Uh, there's not many of them, but they're common and therefore they are always available. So every run, there will be five cards here. These are your, your starter cards, your filler cards. You're going to need to buy these in the beginning to get your deck rolling and everything. But later on, you will swap them out for some of the better cards as you get them. And that would be over here. Well, you know what? I need to brighten these up. There we go. Much better. We have green for the, these are all color coded based on the tier of the card. So uncommon cards are green. This whole section here is for uncommon cards. Uh, we have rare cards, which are blue, and this is this whole section over here, and then we have the victory tomes over there. We'll talk about those in a second. Now, I'm thinking at the end of the game, I think four is the number I want to go with, and that means four cards will be picked randomly to be displayed in these two sections, the uncommon and the rare section. Uncommon cards being twice as likely to appear than rare cards, thus, you know, rare living up to the name rare. And the way this is going to work is absolutely fantastic. This is the way I, I, I built the room the way I did. I could have gone for a much more mechanical room and everything, but I wanted this to be part of the experience. I wanted it to be exciting and stuff. So what the, what's going to happen is when that door opens up, uh, then maybe there'll be a little extra tune plate or something. I don't know what it's going to be, uh, but the four cards will be chosen and they're going to be, you know, there's going to be like a little gap between them. And when they do, it's going to be like chunk, chunk 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 right and every time a card's revealed what's gonna happen if you'll see here we have snow right here but if you're paying attention that is powdered snow right there and underneath there is going to be armor stands holding the cards. It's going to be an armor stand with just holding the card in its right hand using the armor stand magic we have here. And each one of these slots is dedicated to one of the cards in the game, okay? So when a card is picked randomly, that armor stand is simply going to pop up holding the card. Now, the armor stand itself is going to be invisible. So all you're going to see... Hopefully, if I do this right, it's just a card. Just float up and hover in space. And the, the best part about the design is you don't have to pick up the card. They're going to be locked armor stands. You don't have to pick up the cards to see them. All the text will be right there on display. You can just kind of look at them, but don't touch. And touching back on the darkness of the room, when that card pops up, it's going to expose a little bit of like localized light, which is going to then like seep in here. So ev basically every card, see how dark it is back there? Every card that is for sale, they'll be like this nice glowing light behind it. It's really going to draw attention to it, I hope. But once you evaluate all the cards and decide the one you want, if you can afford them, you simply go over and place your frost embers in the shulker box here to uh, to pay. And it will, of course, absorb the shulk. It'll absorb the frost embers up until the cost. Um, you know, if you try to put shulkers in a in a barrel that doesn't have that doesn't have a card for sale, it won't even take them in that kind of stuff. And the other nice thing is once you actually buy the card, it doesn't spit out here or anything. It's just going to be secretly sent away and go up to the return area where your shulker box full of cards is. So when you pick your shulker box up, that's also where you'll pick up any uh, acquirements, we'll say, that you've acquired from the dungeon, including your new cards. Now, we've got common cards. We've got uncommon cards. We've got rare cards. And there are also legendary cards that are purple, but you don't buy those in here. Okay, big update. I got a ton of redstone done. I mean, there's still there's still a ton more to go, but I want to show you guys where we're at because it's it's starting to get a little exciting. Kind of like where we're going here. 
Um, but I want to I want to stress you guys what you're about to see is not really like final. It's more of just like a proof of concept. But imagine if you will that I just finished the uh, finished the run and I got a horn of the goat. You'll notice it's worth 18 frost embers. And I come over here and I throw it down the snowy pit, and we wait. We wait. We wait, wait for it, <laughs> wait for it. Duh. And then if I pick them up, boop, 18 frost embers and I gain access to the frost ember shop. And there's a reason that took quite a while. <laughs> there's a, there's a bit of redstone down here that I've been working on just, just a bit. <laughs> so the way I'm not going to go into everything, like pretty much everything over here is just crazy timing and stuff like that for the, for all the effects. But this right here is the interesting part. This is the, uh, artifact certificator. Uh, that's, that's the technical term over on this side is a standard sorting array where you'll see, let's see, where are they? Yeah. Basically we have each artifact in a sorter there. Okay. Uh, and what I did is I kind of made a realization here. This is the one part I think it's worth mentioning instead of just like figuring out what artifact it is and then trying to spit out that many frost embers in like a vertical slice here. What I decided or what I realized I could do is because the artifacts generally see it's like six, seven, eight they generally go up by ones there's a couple places where it jumps let's see i think yeah uh docs is the first one it goes from 14 to 18 and then it goes back to jumping by one and then up here by the by the back end it's like jumping by two and everything like that basically it's always like a one or a two jump with a with occasionally a jump in value of like four or six so what i decided to do instead is just Basically, as the item is sorting down the line and it's going, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. They're all adding the delta value of what it was, you know, their value minus the the previous one. So it's like add one, add one, add one, add one, add two, add two, add two, add four, add two, add two, add two, you know, something like that. So that's what all these droppers are. So when you put your artifact in and it's going down the line, all of those droppers back there are all all of these droppers back here are all spitting out like just one two one two 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 right and then they all come down and coalesce together i think it's kind of a clever way of doing this instead of trying to figure out which one it is and then find some crazy way to dispense you know 38 frost embers now it's just like it's kind of uh cumulative as it goes down the line and the items come down over here they sit on the soul sand and you'll see there's a dispenser right there that spits out water which completes the bubble vader and it shoots them up and there's a timing on the trap door and everything's great and i've also added in the frost ember shop we have added the victory tomes now these are important this is basically when i want to do my best to explain this uh clearly here this is for how this is how you win decked out this is how you we determine who wins the overall game okay so frost embers are victory tomes are something that you can buy with frost embers they're kind of competing with the cards everything in here you buy with frost embers so you can see you can buy your victory tomes in kind of bundles if you will to, to for more efficiency you can buy one victory tome for 10 frost embers three for 27 or five for 40. So obviously it gets more efficient to buy them in bulk. We've got them floating here on armor stands and this is how the cards are essentially gonna look, just kind of floating there. I absolutely love this look. So suppose I had 27 frost embers and I wanted to buy the three victory tomes. I would come in here and put my 27 frost embers in. I would not get the victory tomes here. They're gonna be uh, released into the stream that goes back to the uh, to the barrel that has your shulker box. And by that, I mean this barrel right here. We'll fix the floor eventually here, but yeah, your shulker box full of your cards will re re return here and then any items you bought, any cards you bought, or in this case, any victory tomes you bought will also be returned here. So you would take your victory tomes over to your personalized cubby hole and you would drop them in your shulker box here, okay? And they'll immediately get sucked up and put into a little storage container down below. Now, decked out is gonna be run in phases. I think each phase is gonna be uh, one week. So basically like every Sunday night, I will come by and check all of the 
all of the victory tome submissions here for each player underneath and tally them up and sort them based on who submitted the most and then for each week every every phase of the game every week of the game like i said i'll tally them up and if you came in first place you'll probably get like five points if you came in second place you'll get three fourth place you'll get two and then like so on and so forth i'm not sure how the points will diminish off there they'll fall off pretty quick though uh but this right here is the scoreboard for the overall game so however many points you get in that week of decked out is how many snow layers i will add to your layer here so this is the scoreboard and it's got like you know it's basically a bar graph we're gonna have each hermit's head that's playing the game on these blocks here okay so you know like this is whatever this is like jevin will be right here okay and if jevin came in second place maybe he gets three snow layers added to his bar here okay uh and then when decked out is done whoever has the tallest bar wins and to be clear i don't know how long decked out will run that's going to be based on interest i don't think it would be fair to tell the hermits that the game's only going to last six weeks or eight weeks or whatever they'll be you know i'll probably get like a three-week warning when it seems like it's winding down but it, i'm hoping it runs at least eight weeks hopefully 10 we'll see so i kind of like the idea of victory tomes i think they're going to add some interesting design elements to the game a couple things you know I, I really like basically when you're in here now you're torn between you know buying a new shiny card for my deck which is essentially investing for the long term making you more powerful and making future runs better or short term to buy victory tomes to try to get points this week and that's what that's the other benefit too with doing doing decked out in phases or in weeks i think is good because you can't it, it discourages the gameplay which is just build up my deck build up my deck and then get all my points at the end because i have the most powerful deck now you're really trying to balance growing your deck buying new cards versus gaining points because if you don't score points in a week of decked out those points are gone you can never get them there's only a finite amount of points and that's based on the amount of you know weeks that we play this game you know and i fully expect you know like week one week two the winner may be may only get a couple of victory tomes you know the week one winner may have three victory tomes where the week nine winner is probably going to have like 15 or 16 who knows i'm making these numbers up but just to show that what it takes to win is going to change the more the farther we get into decked out because people's average you know the, their their deck size is going to be so much bigger and more powerful that they can acquire more victory tomes per week and as you can see i've also added the coin to crown convertificator upgrader nader thing here uh basically if you remember in recent changes we added the concept of treasure to the game there are coins and crowns think of these as just like small denomination large denomination you know it's like if you're an american it's it's pennies and dollars if you're if you're a D, &D player it's you know copper and gold it's just so what we're gonna have here is like eight coins upgrades into one crown and that eight may change i may change that to six or something we'll see depending on how it goes but crowns crowns can leave the dungeon coins cannot so uh say i have like you know i acquired we'll say 16 decked out coins here through my runs i put these in here they get sucked up and then there's a a, a pretty cool little counter in the back there and all that redstone soup that for every eight coins you submit it will submit one more crown. I should be getting one more. There we go, two. So, and if you have excess, if I have like, you know, 18, or if I, sorry, if I have like 20 coins, we'll say, I'm still only gonna get two crowns and the rest are just gonna be wasted. But I think that's a good thing because if you have excess when you're in the dungeon, that's gonna incentivize you to try and get a multiple value of coins equal to the denomination. You know, if you've got 20, coins you might want to stick around and try and get 24 so that you can get that full extra crown and again crowns are what's going to be used on the shop outside the dungeon to buy little uh, temporary upgrades to the game now after you buy your cards after you buy your victory tomes and after you convert your coins and all your business is done here you head out the glorious exit of supreme victory this will be closed off right here and you drop down this hole right here and i should note that if you forget to convert your coins into crowns i will automatically do it for you again down there i i kind of debated this do i want to i knew i wanted to have one at the, down there automatically in case you forgot but i'm doing one here too mostly because it feels better to do it here explicitly and this is a good teaching opportunity to explain how the conversion works here but again the, the coins cannot leave the dungeon if you forget they'll be upgraded to crowns automatically for you upon exit uh but this kind of shows you how the process works okay so we've got a lot done here but we've got a lot more to go i have a huge amount of redstone if you thought that was a lot of redstone this entire area has got to be filled we have to build all the shops out now and all the card buying process and the card 
randomizer to show which cards are going to be available at each run all kinds of things so let's get busy here okay this slice right here is one version like one slice of the store technology the item purchasing the the card selection everything and this is what we're going to build about 32 times here like 16 times going back this way and about another 16 times over on that side so real quick let me see if i can explain how this works this right here is essentially uh we'll just call this a sorter that when a card is picked we'll get into all that later uh it'll trigger this sorter here okay which will essentially do that and that'll pick you know uh, take an item from here mop it up to there which essentially turns this slice on now uh you'll see it raise this piston and i should have actually let me see i can just show it to you here there's an armor stand on top of that block here and the armor stand the top half of the armor stand is already in the powdered snow and it would be just it would be displaying the card and everything but it would be obscured by the powdered snow the armor stand would be invisible and everything and then when the card is selected and like so if i press the button here it pushes up and the card the top of the armor stand then and the card itself are then exposed to the room saying basically hey this vertical slice is on you'll see this light here went on and that's the extra light that's going to give attention that light is going to glow through these hoppers and through the shulker and brighten the room for the selected card kind of drawing attention to it which is pretty cool and with that torch going off these two hoppers are enabled now and this right here is another sorter that is pulling out the frost embers so they'll go ahead and put their frost embers if you remember that's the floor of the shop there they put their frost embers there it gets pulled through here which will then trigger eventually when it get when you get enough every time you get an extra frost ember in there it'll update this note block which will uh, trigger that observer and this right here is the counter the counting the the cost of the card so there'll be uh items in that dropper there based on the cost of the card that you want to buy so every time you add a frost ember uh, and you can add them in stacks it doesn't have to be one at a time but it'll kick one frost ember from there over to that locked hopper and therefore when that dropper is empty it will then turn the system off again as well as power that dropper which has the uh the card that you just bought it will drop it down into a water hi bye it will drop it down into a water stream down below and then when the when we're done when they're done purchasing when they leave the room i just got to power this to disable all of the armor stands and then i also have to unpower that line there to let the uh cost counters drain back into the dropper overall pretty pretty awesome system this took me a while to come up with it's large but the fact that it's tile is the best part uh the and i should mention that we're going to alternate slime blocks and honey blocks going back away so that they don't stick but other than that totally tileable and it's just going to be an amazing shop here when it's done i think i have a confession to make uh i might be addicted to custom audio files how could i not be there just so much fun they add so much to the game the custom jukebox audio disc player thing it's my favorite thing ever i just want to use it all the time <laughs> okay this is done uh i am super super pleased with how this turned out this is this is an experience guys you gotta check this out this took a long time to get working here uh but let's go here i got my papa slippers and i've got 50 embers currently let's throw the papa slippers in the snow hole and we wait now the reason i added this low drone build up here though is because it takes a while to collect the frost embers and i wanted the player to know that we're working and to uh to build a little suspense and i think i think it does that and you know it's not the final sound but it's it's the idea but let's watch this oh we got a fish there too <laughs> okay watch this watch wait for it so good so good it randomly selects the cards that are picked and it plays that sound as it doom as it reveals one of the cards so these are all randomly chosen again we got incredibly lucky here because the rares are twice as, as likely to uh to show up or or twice as unlikely i guess you could say these are twice as likely to show up as the rares but we got three rares that time you can see the way the cards are popping up here and just floating so if i want to buy this card here i simply put the items in there and 
and I won't get the card, but it will go, it'll get spit out down below and go all the way up to the uh, barrel where my shulker box will be at the end of the run. We've got our common cards over here, Sneak, Stability, a Treasure Hunter, and Ember Seeker. We've done a complete redesign of the layout and the, like the mechanics, not the mechanics, but the, the just the layout of the card. Instead, we got rid of like the sidebars there and everything, and we just simplified and everything is in the white box now. Whatever the card does will be listed in the white, the white, uh, the white box here. So this is block one clank. This is block two hazard right there. We've got a uh, plus four treasure and plus two frost embers. Those are obviously very simple cards, but then you get some more complicated cards like, uh, well, yeah, like suit up. Suit up has got like a ton of words on it. So you can see the flexibility we have in the cards here and uh, and what we can what we can display on them. So like you got chill step here. This one here is a blocks two hazard and future sneak cards. That being those over there. Future sneak cards played gain plus three frost embers and this bonus can stack. We have all kinds of new cards. I'm not gonna reveal all of them right now, but we got the swagger here, which is plus 12 treasure, plus 12 frost embers, but you shuffle two stumble cards into your deck. And you might be asking what stumble? This is stumble here. These are now bad cards. This is the only bad card and it will get added to your did I talk Did I talk about this? I don't remember if I talked about this or not. This will get added to your deck automatically after you start the game and the more difficult your game you're playing, the more of these will get added to your, to your shuffle deck. And again, they don't stay in your deck, but they're added and then pulled out at the end. But these are just basically bad cards. Cards. This one, when you draw it, it adds to Clank right away. Technically, you'll never see this card. You'll never hold it in your hand like I am. It's a, it's a behind the scenes thing, but it functions all the same. Oh, and I forgot to add these signs here. So this is how you'll know how much the cards are, is I'm just going to put a simple number on these on the signs. So the cards themselves don't have to have the cost embedded in it. It's just part of the shop, which is much cleaner, I think. So above each sign or above each card will be a cost in Frost Embers right there. And as you might expect, the, uh, the redstone down here is... Uh, fairly fairly bonkers uh i mean i don't know what to say it's, it's this took many many hours i do have one little bug right now where sometimes you're supposed to get four cards each time and as you saw the last one you got five we're gonna run it again in a second and i'm, I'm gonna guess we're gonna get four cards that time i gotta figure that out why it's doing that but there's a lot going on here this 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 took a while I'm not going to explain it all. So let's run it one more time just for the effect. See what cards we get. We'll throw in our jar of speedy slime in there and we will wait. Like I said, I'll probably get these sounds swapped out for something a little bit better, but I, I think it works good enough for now. Oh, notice the uh, notice the center block there, by the way. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Give me my artifacts. Fish down there. <laughs> and let's see what we get this time. Come on. Wait for it. One. Two. Okay, the sound issues. Three. Four. Four. Okay, so that time it worked. Nope, no, five. Come on. <laughs> I, don't, I gotta figure that out. That's weird. And there was like that huge delay. Yeah, there's a weird bug in the system. Oh, well. And you saw the sound didn't play in the second one, too. If two of the cards are played, like, and the sound is still playing. So I gotta I gotta fix that out. But all of these things are doable. The effect, though, is great. You, you can see, like, the lighting. See how the lighting, like, draws attention to the cards. It's brighter over there, but, like, dark over here and stuff. Love everything about this. And I should say there's plenty of room for expansion. I think I have, like, five empty slots on each side here still. So so plenty of room. We could add a lot more rare cards and a lot more uncommon cards as the game progresses. So that is the Frost Ember Shop. I'm I'm fairly certain I'm forgetting to explain something that I wanted to mention. If you have questions, just leave me a comment and I'll be sure to answer them as always. Uh, and I'd appreciate some feedback. What do you guys think we should do differently in here? What do you think we, we, we could do better? Well, with that said, I have a treat for you guys. Don't go anywhere. For those of you that haven't already seen it, I did a live stream where ZF tested level one and he ran in the dungeon about 10 times uh, with Ravagers and Evokers and it was hilarious and I would say massively successful. So I am going to run some of that footage now. Enjoy. Welcome ZF to Hello. Decked Out. Are you ready Whoa. my friend? 
<laughs> I could never be ready. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Oh, I am excited. I hope you're excited. Uh, this is going to be the first time anyone has run the game besides me. Oh, wait. The first time anybody has died in the game besides you. Well, I have. I actually haven't died in the game yet, and this may be a concern. What? I know. I know. We may have to. <laughs> hopefully, you will. You'll be the first. Hopefully let me in. Let me in. I'll let change me it. Show you how to do this. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, quick, you know, there's only level one. It's not the full game. There's a lot of things still be still to be done. But my goal is yeah, I'm yeah, making yeah. level one of the dungeon totally playable. So we're gonna run through, you know, a couple little trials today, a couple various situations with different decks of cards, focusing on different themes, and uh, I just want all your feedback. I just, I just want you to just not stop talking, good or bad, about your experience and every little thought that enters your brain. You are ugly. Um, Fantastic. You smell. Great. I can't um, change that, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will be. I will verbal diarrhea all over decked out just for you, my Excellent. friend. Excellent. All right. Let me uh, let me get you a deck of cards, and uh, we'll get you in there. Get eaten by some okay. ravagers. In the mine card, I go. All right. Fire away. Oh, I have to hit the button. Ah! Okay. I'm hearing scary like. Yeah. Rah, rah. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Okay. I'm in. Treasure hunter. Treasure hunter. Oh, that's real good. He totally is. is. Stability. Stability. Okay, I'm getting good. What? I'm back at the beginning. I'm sure. How are. do I? Oh, there's a guy right there. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's a... I can't go that way. Oh. Oh, there's a. Okay, I was listening to it for a card noise. Okay, this way. Sneak. Sneak. Oh, I got yeah. Some clank got blocked then. Good, good, good. Well done, sneak. Oh! <laughs> the whole time you're just like. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Oh, I didn't even know. Wow. Okay, some more treasure. <laughs> He's still coming after me, man. He's no, relentless. Like it's a different one. Ah. It's a different ah. one. Like what? Blocked. <laughs> TNT. I want to blow everything up. Is it here? No! No! <laughs> okay. Okay, let's do this. Okay, clank block. That's very good news. Down the stairs. Down the stairs? There was a door here once! Is it... Oh, there is through the wardrobe! <laughs> oh, double berry bush. Ow, I got berry! Yeah, and he kills himself on the berries! <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, at my first ember! Uh, there you okay. go. Okay, horn of the goat. There you go. Okay, and make this jump. Be really cool. Oh, uh, God! There's the exit! No, 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 no. Oh, I got the hood of oh yeah. Seek the key. Offer it to the kneeling man. Okay, I have a key, kneeling towel man. Oh, there's a there's a nicely marked thing. Oh, there's a Zelda. <laughs> there you go. Come on, follow me. Come on. Whoa, okay. Oh, he's following. Oh, he's following. Oh, and there was a sec separate one. Oh no, what have you done? What have I done? There's oh, a key! Let's go down the dead end! <laughs> no! Oh, 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 the horror! They don't oh, get all the horrors of everything! They can just walk right across the towel oh, man! <laughs> Save me, towel me in man. your towel! Oh, I love it! You're pretty much at max though, hey. hazard and max clank right now, yeah. Enjoy. Okay, I gotta get out of here. Yes, you do. Whoa, the vex! <laughs> <laughs> what? Where did they come from? Sneaky, sneaky. I think I'm approaching the... Oh, guy! Oh, a key! A key poked into my hand! You just got free key poops! Oh, you're so dead. Free key poops! Oh, he helped! <laughs> Thank you! Thank you, Ravager, he for the help! He expedited your retreat! Okay. Oh, okay! Oh, man, this is bad news. Oh, there's a guy! Okay. Oh. Wowzers! Wowzers! Oh! Oh, he blended! He blended into the scenery! <laughs> okay. Oh. oh, we can make it over! Sure you can. just climbed! Come on, you clumsy thing! Oh, you got that close! I know! Uh, I got uh, Axe of the Screaming Boy! That's right, you did! Oh, there's a guy right there! Ah! These stairs aren't very friendly! Okay! And I'm out! Well done! Oh. Well done! <laughs> that was a good run! How do I get past? I can't get past him that way, though. 
Sure you can. What? Tango? I mean, I can. You made what? it. I told you. You got <laughs> past him. What's the problem? Oh. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't even know. <laughs> it takes a like. Oh, this is this is bad. This Ooh, is bad. Oh, this is deja vu right here. I love it. Okay. Um, Hazard locked. Oh, something impeded my jump. <laughs> skill. Oh yeah, skill impeded me. <laughs> I was I was stuck. Oh, oh right. he fell from the <laughs> sky. Right you just ran he, into his face. He oh, fell. I love it. <laughs> oh, he's the, he don't care about no river. <laughs> oh no. no. Oh no. Unfortunate. This oh. is the end. Okay. <laughs> Hazard luck. Hold on a second. Right. <laughs> Get me back in there as quickly as possible. I'm going I think, again. I think we need to discuss at length uh, <laughs> some of the failures that you just uh, demonstrated. Okay. Well, yeah, sure. The game worked perfectly. <laughs> Good job. Um, still I did it. not. Good job. Oh. Okay. Right. Come on, baby. Oh, and there's another guy. We've been down this road before. I'm dead. We've been I'm down dead. this There's road two, before. Two of them in there. Two in there and one behind me. What am I meant to do? Not go that way. I need treasure though. I need a key. Oh, and there's a key. Look at you. you. Save, You're so lucky save with the you keys. Shall receive. I love oh, I fell. I'm wet. I, okay. I love how there's this nice little bridge here. He just ignores it. <laughs> oh, there's a guy up there. But I'm pretty sure he's stuck. See, he's not. He doesn't even know how to move. I kind of want to go that way though. Is this going to unstick him? Ah, uh, what? He's unstuck. <laughs> Come on! He hit me that you, way! You thought you could make it across that? I thought I could squeeze past! He was all busy! Tango, I have I have to do one I have to live once more before. I mean we end the it's uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's getting a little embarrassing at this point, right? I mean... <laughs> oh I lured, I lured Oh I lured! I knew I did! Okay! <laughs> Where's this bridge that everyone keeps telling me about? Oh there's a bridge! I fell! <laughs> <laughs> the bridge is terrible! Stability. <laughs> Stability. Hazard. I'm, I'm concentrated. Oh, there's a bridge. Come on. Tango, I'm trying to concentrate here, and it's very difficult when oh, you are crying face. with laughter in my face. My face is gonna pop. Oh, okay, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. Not be able to sprint soon, too. Okay. Better sprint now, okay. Skippy. I can't sprint now. Now's a bad time oh. for that to kick in. Oh. Walk very briskly. <laughs> Brisk. You made, you made death faster. Brisk as I can. He's gonna die oh, right man. here. He's gonna die right. I, oh, there's a cake. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Words. What? That's a hazard for you there, friend. Oh, I got blocked. <laughs> I'm very, very nervous. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I look at my compass for one second. Uh, the timing of that, like you just ran directly into that ravager. <laughs> you like coming back here? Is it here? Huh. Tango! Thus concludes your run of deck out, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I've fallen in the hole and I can't get out. Hold on, look at me. I want a picture of this because this is good. <laughs> Wait. This is embarrassing. I know. That's why I'm getting a picture of it. This is good. <laughs> Well, there you have it, ZF doing what ZF does best. I will leave a link to the entire uncut, I think it was like a two, three hour stream on my second channel. Uh, if you want to see the whole thing, it was absolutely hilarious. That was just a sample of all the laughs we had. Head on over there and watch. And guys, remember, like a good part, a huge part of Decked Out is designed and implemented in live streams. And if you want to watch that, it's kind of good little backgrounds, you know, little action to, to listen to when you got some time. and head over to the second channel subscribe and watch the live streams there and that will do it for today guys i think we made some pretty good progress here let me know what you think about the shop the randomization the presentation the looks anything i'd love to hear some feedback from you until next time guys decked out will continue